Hi, this is Sniz with Bloodbane, World 11, Lord of Ultima. Uh, this is my September 3rd vlog, vlog about uh, being uh, plundered, uh, just some battle mechanics and whatnot. Uh, and I'm picking up from previous parts, so I'll just pick up where I left off. So, uh, anyway, um, the, the, the thing that I mainly wanted to cover here was situation awareness, ways to use various point pieces of information to try to gain information about the inbound attack. Um, the first thing is, um, you know, I'm being attacked. That's all I know. It does not tell how large the force is or whatever, but there's actually a lot of other information here uh, that I want to learn how to utilize. The first one is, is that I have an attack that's going to arrive at 2317. That's 1117 my time. Um, the next thing I want to know is how far away is he, how long would it take him to arrive with various different attack forms. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go to his city. And when I target it from that city, it tells me travel times, which in turn tells me the travel times from him to me. Um, in this case, this is a city. If he was sending a scout only, it would only take 4 hours and 45 minutes to reach me. Now, I saw this at 5.30, which was just over six hour, just under 6 hours in advance. So, if this had been just a scout mission, if these were just scouts, uh, I would have not seen it when I did. It would have taken another, well, it would have been 4 hours and 45 minutes before 11.17 without doing the complicated math. Uh, or it's not complicated math. Without doing the math, the bottom line is, is I would not have seen this attack at 5.30 if it had been scouts because scouts are too fast. And, oh, let me, let me cover one other quick thing. Going to my city, how I know part of this, and one thing that I really wish I had just a little more upgraded lookout towers. I had one upgraded to give me a four-hour spot time, additional spot time, that's four. I have another one to give me an additional one. These were intended to be upgraded, I just hadn't gotten around to upgrading them. That's an error. Um, and you get a base of one, which means that from this city I can see an attack coming six hours away. If I had an extra two hours of notice time, I would have been able to know for sure whether this was infantry or ca cavalry. And I'll cover that in just a second. But at this stage, I'm in the I'm in, I'm in the air as to whether or not this is infantry and cavalry, but what I know is that it isn't a, just a scout. Um, why? Because I saw it almost like five hours and 50, 45 minutes ahead of time, and I can tell you that if it was an infantry attack, I would have. And if I had my hour, my my scout tower is higher, I would have seen it coming several hours before, and I've been on throughout the day, so I would have seen it. Uh, and if it was a scout attack, I would not have seen it as early. There's no way I could see it a scout attack at 5.30 that arrives at 11.17, because it doesn't take that long for them to get there. They would have arrived earlier or left later. So I know it's not a scout. So now I'm limited to, uh, theoretically, it could be a siege again if I had higher towers, um, although it's Siege Engine, they can't do anything, so to be retarded to send. So uh, I'm not worried about this. But if this was a castle, I'd want to have that information. So having those spot times, travel times, time when you saw the attack, that can be a lot of information. It can tell you what kind of a troop may be attacking. Right now, I've isolated this down to either cavalry or infantry under these circumstances. Now, this is the part that I'm not 100% sure of because I didn't quite notice the time when I first saw the attack. I logged in, I saw the attack, I clicked, I saw it out there, I sat down and did some cues, and then I dealt with it. Um, so I am fairly certain that I saw, I, I, I can't say for sure. Um, bottom line is I'm guessing this is cavalry, but it could be infantry. Uh, so, uh, anyway, that's, uh, one key piece, uh, basically just using travel distance time, time spotted, and distance of your towers, upgrading those lookout towers. I'm shooting for about a 9 to 10 hour notice. You don't need to upgrade, you know, you don't need to spend too many tower slots, but I'm thinking two, uh, at least one fully upgraded lookout tower and po possibly a second, at least partially upgraded, should give plenty of spot time to see what's coming and start guessing what it is based on how much notice you get. Because if you can see farther than their, ca than their staging point for the attack, then based on the time that you start seeing the attack, you can calculate how long it took takes to the travel time and that and just from this table you can tell what it is so um, anyway I guessed um, I kind of hedged my bets I'm placing a little heavier barricades but um, now I'm not spending a lot on this but you know only cost me a couple thousand stone to plop it up and I'm just trying to maximize their losses and you know they're not getting any plunder for sure 
Um, I got 135,000 plunder protection in this. When you see an attack coming from six hours away, I, I got six cities here. I can ship my goods out. They're all under plunder level, but even if they weren't, I can shift and play games back and forth with shifting my resources around. Um, so they're certainly not going to get any resources, and now I just want this to hurt as bad as I possibly can. Now, um, he is sending a single attack from far away. I got plenty of time to prepare for. His first mistake is why send just one attack to this location? He should send six attacks, one whatever it is. Let's say he's sending berserkers. He should send one berserker to each other city and this force to here. That would require me to worry about all five cities. I w if I had too, mu too many resources in this region, I'd be kind of stuck with the inability right now to ship them out. I'm managing that carefully, but um, so I'd potentially not be able to shift all my resources around. And much more importantly, I would actually have to take all of these troops and, con and spread them around rather than having them consolidated. As it is, I, I don't have a ton of defenses over here. I'm just allowing myself to maximize th them based on the kind of weakness of their attack cap their attack plans here. Uh, so basically, this town itself only has 440 rangers, but I got some military towns building up close by, so I have 4,000 on support from Omega-3, I have uh, 154 from Omega-2, or at various different stages, 3136 from another, uh, 1686 from another. I'm actually going to have some, I mean, I'm building ballistas to bring in here, to, put, to have here before he arrives, so I'm even going to have, a, I don't know, 30 or 40 ballistas in place uh, before he gets here. So uh, whatever he sends, this is going to hurt him for sure. The other thing is, is berserkers make really crappy uh, defense units. And I don't even know why I had these. I think I just misclicked at some point, but why lose them? I actually sent my berserkers out. So the berserkers that are home here, I sent to a different city just because I want them on support over there because I don't want them to die. I, I guess I shouldn't care. Maybe I do want to get rid of them. But the important part is that tactic. I, you can actually take your offensive troops, and this is most important when you're dealing with a castle. Your offensive troops have shitty defense values, and they're going to die. So in many cases, if you have good defensive support troops on, on hand, you can send your offensive troops that are home there to support something else so that they're not in the mix to get damaged um, to take heavier losses with doing little return damage. So anyway, uh, not particularly important in this case, but at least the concept of the tactic of taking my offensive troops in town and getting them out on support somewhere else protects them from taking damage when they're really not going to do that much. Their defensive values are crap, berserkers particularly, so in particular. So um, anyway, that's uh, basically, you know, like I said, if, if this were a Bloodbane member plundering somebody, the first thing I'd tell you is don't try to plunder for somebody from 6, 7, 8 hours, 12 hours away. Um, this game, at least this stage of the game, is going to be about local regional control. We want to build military complexes and strategic locations and there to control the local area, not to try to attack people halfway across the continent. Um, so the first thing I tell you is don't do it in the first place. Uh, the second thing is, if you were, if you were intent on doing this, pissed at me for plundering you or whatever, um, what you want to do is, at the very simple, he might need to bring in some raiding troops or whatever, he need to get his queues uh, uh, emptied enough to free six slots, but he should send one Zerker at each of, each of my other towns, and then his big wave at one of them. That way I'd have to split this, I don't know, 10,000, a little less than 10,000 in defenses among six cities, rather than having all... You know, four, seven, eight, nine ish, nine thousand, probably closer to ten thousand rangers sitting in this city, um, waiting to hammer them with towers. They're going to double their defenses, which actually I'm probably going to kick some towers up. So, anyway, with this attack coming in from this far away, um, I th I'm throwing down some barricades just because I think it is cavalry. I went ahead and threw in a couple of pitfalls. I'm not spending a lot of money upgrading these very far. I'm just kicking them up to level 5s for now. I'm using some of these outer towers as almost like a dynamic a shift back and forth uh, approach. Uh, and then I'm probably going to go ahead and, you know, I've got another hour and a half, two hours or whatever before he gets here. Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and kick some of these ranger towers up so that hopefully close to all 10,000 are also doubled in their defensive value before his troops get here. So um, anyway, just as this stuff comes up, I'm going to try to do little vids here and there, um, mostly just covering tactics. Like I said, I'm not going to sit here and say for sure that this guy's, I mean, you know, not, not a good player or whatever. I can tell you this attack isn't particularly effective, uh, but, you know, it, it is what it is. So... Uh, 
but mostly this is just for our members to kind of learn some of the mechanics there. So uh, anyway, that's it. Just about out of time. Peace.